Hey there, fellow coding enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting topic for you, especially if you're just getting started with Python. We're going to build a simple web scraper using Python, and I'll walk you through every step of the process. But before we dive in, let's quickly talk about what a web scraper is. A web scraper is a program that extracts information from websites. In this case, we're going to scrape some inspirational quotes from a website and save them to a text file. So let's get started. To start our exciting journey, we need some special tools. Think of it like packing your bag before going on a treasure hunt. Let's do this together and make it super fun. First, we need a tool called Tukinter. It's like a magic wand that helps us create cool buttons and text boxes on our computer screen. We can easily bring it into our adventure with a simple line of code. Import Tukinter as Tak. Tada! We now have our first tool. But wait, we need even more awesome tools. Specifically, we want a button and text tool from our Tkinter toolbox. To grab these, we use a secret code from Tkinter import button text. With this code, we've just added two more magical tools to our collection. Now, imagine we're explorers and want to send messages to far off lands. For that, we need a tool called requests. It's like a magical carrier pigeon that can take our messages to websites. So, let's bring in requests by saying import requests. And lastly, we need a special tool called Beautiful Soup. This tool is like a treasure map reader, but for reading the hidden secrets inside web pages, HTML content, we can summon it with the incantation from BS4 import Beautiful Soup. And just like that, we have our very own treasure map reader. But here's the catch. Before you can use these tools, you need to make sure they're in your backpack, Python environment. If they're not there, you can't use them. No worries, though. We've left some instructions on how to install these tools in the description below. It's as easy as following a recipe. Now we're all set with our tools, and our adventure is about to get even more exciting. Let's dive in to the next part. Next. We're creating a function. Think of it as our treasure map. It's going to help us find those quotes. We'll call it scrape, quotes, and save. Inside our function, the first step is to decide where we're going. We are setting our destination URL to quotes.toscrape.com. All right, we are done with the setting a URL. This URL belongs to the target website from which the code intends to scrape or retrieve data. Now it's time to send a HTTP request to that place. To do that, we are creating variable named response. This variable contains the server's response to the HTTP request, including the status code, headers, and content, and the requests.get URL. This function is used to send an HTTP GET request to the specified URL. This is a common way to retrieve web content from a server. The get function is part of the requests library and is used to make get requests. Now comes the exciting part. We need to understand the treasure map, HTML content, from our destination. This is where beautiful soup comes in. We'll be masters at reading this map. Right here, we're creating a special object named soup. This object will become our guide, helping us make sense of the web page's content. This beautiful soup is not a dish. It's a Python library. It's designed to parse HTML content, which is the language websites use to structure their information. Now, inside the parentheses, we have two important parameters. The first one, response.text, is the raw HTML content we got from the website. Think of it as a block of text containing everything the website has to offer and... The second parameter, html.parser, is like a translation tool. It tells Beautiful Soup to use a specific method called html.parser to understand and make sense of the HTML code. Isn't coding like an amazing adventure? All right, let's dive into the next part. Brace yourselves, fellow explorers, because now we're diving into the heart of our web scraping adventure. 
These two lines of code are where we extract and display the hidden treasures, the quotes from the website. In the coming two lines of code, we're like treasure hunters looking for the most precious gems, the quotes on the website. First, we create a special variable called quotes to hold all the treasures we find. Now in the next line, we tell our trusty soup, our expert map reader, to start a quest. We're looking for something specific on the web page. Imagine it like searching for hidden treasure chests marked with the label quote. And inside these chests, we want the shiny gems hidden within the tags. Once our soup has completed its quest, it returns a collection of these found treasures, the quotes, and we keep them safe in the quotes container. Now in the next line, we say, let's take a look at each treasure one by one. To do this, we use a magical loop called a for loop. It's like opening each treasure chest one after the other. For quote in quotes, and here's where the real adventure begins. We have a special display board called Result Text. Imagine it as our treasure showcase. For each treasure, we say, Hey, Mr. Quote, share your secrets with us. The quote dot get text command is like a spell that helps us take only the text from within the treasure chest. Once we have the text, we proudly display it in our Result Text text box. We add it to the end of the text box using tk.end. We also add a new line character, backslash and end to separate each treasure. And there you have it. With these lines of code, we've successfully unearthed the hidden treasures, quotes, from the website and displayed them for everyone to admire. Our adventure has just begun, so stay tuned for the next thrilling chapter. Ahoy, fellow treasure hunters! In this segment, we're uncovering the final piece of our web scraping puzzle, saving our discovered quotes to a text file. Let's carefully analyze these lines and understand how they work. So we are using the with statement and the open function is used to open files. First, we're opening a file named scrapedquotes.txt. If the file doesn't exist, Python will create it. The A argument means we're opening it in append mode, which allows us to add new quotes without erasing the existing ones and saving it as file. Next, we're starting a for loop. For each quote in our collection of quotes, our treasures, we're going to do something special. Inside the loop, we're telling our file to write something. But what? Well, we want to write the text of each quote, right? We're asking each quote, give us your text your essence. The quote dot get text is like a magic spell that extracts only the text from the quote element. After we've collected the text, we gently place it in our scraped quotes.txt file. And to keep things neat and organized, we add a new line character and to separate each quote. And there you have it. With these lines of code, we're not only displaying our treasures, but also preserving them in a text file for future adventures. All right, let's dive into another part. Now that we have our tools ready, let's craft a user-friendly interface for our treasure hunt. It's time to create the main application window. All right, we're creating a special object named App. This object represents our main application window, which is like the canvas where we'll design our user interface. Now we breathe life into our canvas. We're calling tk.tk to initialize a new tkinter application. Think of it as the birth of our GUI. Every adventure needs a title, right? In this line, we're naming our application window. We are using the title method to set the title or the name of the main application window in a graphical user interface, GUI, created using the tkinter library in Python. We're giving it the title Web Scraper. And just like that, with these lines of code, we've created the window where our web scraping adventure will unfold. Our GUI is ready. Now dive in to the next part. Now it's time to transform our blank canvas into a captivating treasure map. These lines of code will create and configure the user interface elements for our web scraping adventure. Join me as we bring our GUI to life, piece by piece, 
To make it look amazing, we'll add a label, a magic button that triggers our treasure hunt, and a scroll where our found quotes will be displayed. So first, we're crafting a label widget. Think of it as the signpost at the beginning of our treasure hunt. We're giving it a message, a warm invitation to our users. But where does this label belong? We specify that it's going to be part of our main application window, represented by app. This is where we want our signpost to be displayed. The message, enclosed in double quotes, is what our label will display to the users. It's an invitation, a call to action, and a hint of the adventure that awaits them. And just like that, with this single line of code, we've created a guiding signpost that will make our GUI more user-friendly. Our label is ready to be placed on our canvas. Once our label is ready, we need to put it on our canvas, the GUI. With dot pack, paddy equal to 10, we're giving it some space, padding, to make it look appealing. Now behold the button. We're crafting a button widget, just like a blacksmith forging a magical sword. This button is no ordinary button. It's our gateway to adventure. We're creating a button widget called Scrape Our Button. But where should this magical button reside? We specify that it's going to be part of our main application window, represented by app. This is where we want our portal to the treasure hunt to appear. With the text, scrape quotes and save. The text enclosed in double quotes is the label for our button. It reads, scrape quotes and save, an invitation that beckons users to begin their quest. Now here's where the real magic happens. We're specifying that when this button is clicked, it will execute a command. That command is the scrape quotes and save function. Clicking this button sets our treasure hunt into motion. And with this line of code, we've created a button that's not just any button. It's the beginning of our grand adventure. Our treasure hunt button is ready to be placed on our canvas, and our button deserves a place of honor. With dot pack, we add it to our canvas. Get ready to click and embark on our adventure. Last but not least, we're setting up a text widget and we are naming it as result.text. This is where our discovered treasures, the quotes, will be displayed. We're specifying its height and width to make it a suitable display board. Just like our label and button, we're placing the text widget on our canvas with dot pack. And voila! With these lines of code, we've crafted an inviting interface for our treasure hunt. Our GUI is set, and the stage is ready. If you've enjoyed this part of our coding journey or have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. The real treasure hunting begins soon, so stay tuned for more coding escapades. Let's jump into to the final part. Ah, we've reached a pivotal moment in our adventure. This single line of code sets our guai in motion, like the curtains opening for a grand performance. We're giving the command to start the GUI event loop. It's like telling the actors to take the stage and begin the show. Remember our app object? It represents our main application window, the canvas of our adventure. Well, this line tells app to take charge and handle all the interactions within the GUI. The main loop method is where the magic truly happens. It's a loop that listens for events, like button clicks and mouse movements, and responds to them. It ensures our GUI stays responsive and interactive. And just like that, with this single line of code, we breathe life into our GUI. All right, adventurers, we've wrapped up the coding part. Now it's time for the real magic. Let's run our code and see what Python has in store for us. Get ready for the excitement. Boom, look at that. We've got ourselves a web scraper with a user-friendly interface. It's like our own little treasure hunting tool. Now, right there, you see an option that says Scrap Quotes and Save. Go ahead, click that button, and let's see what happens next. And just like that, folks, we've scraped some awesome quotes from the website. It's like discovering hidden gems. But wait, there's more. Now, we want to make sure those quotes are safely stored, right? Well, let's check. We'll open a path where our Python project located. Let's see. And guess what? Python has created a file and saved our precious quotes in there. That's it. 
We've successfully built a web scraper, and it's as easy as that. We've gone from coding to treasure hunting in no time. Thanks for joining us on this exciting journey, fellow adventurers. We've explored the world of web scraping and created our very own treasure hunting tool. Remember, coding is all about unleashing your creativity and curiosity. Keep tinkering, keep learning, and who knows what amazing things you'll discover next. If you enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss our next coding escapade. Until then, happy coding and happy exploring.